So what can you tell about the reading forms? Are there some things that only doctors can discuss between themselves? There's a lot of things that only doctors can discuss between themselves. No, but it's doctor to speak. Yes, yeah, doctor speak. What I think is clever about it is I think Stephen has managed to add something to the mythology of the story, which A is a testament to the sort of the ability and the longevity of the show, but also him as a writer and, and um, and I think, I think that's really, you know, for me as a new fan, I love that sort of stuff. So that's cool. Apart from that, nothing. That's the <laughs> end. <laughs> and Stephen, you did something with this story that has actually put those, those wilderness scenes to some use. You found a space in which yeah. a whole other story can emerge. Yeah, well, that's, that, that's an exciting thing to do because it is the great fact that the first 16 years of the BBC was very wrong. I didn't make up to do, but it does. It does create an interesting gap. What was the most secretive hero on television? Uh, what was he up to for 16 years? He hasn't told you his name, so you can see he's got other secrets too. So that was a cool thing to do. Yeah, I like that. And how's it for you, Mark? So the seeing all of this, logistically difficult, is it, to get people to do a merge room a little bit later? Yes. Yeah. No, I mean, it was, it was, it was a privilege. Uh, it was a huge phenomenal to challenge everybody to make the cast anchor on a daily basis to make that show. I think we really tried to put everything out there for the fans and the audience. And how did the fact that it was also being made in 3D affect the production process? Uh, it was a new experience because nobody had done it before. It's, it's the first kind of BBC drama to be set on gas in the cinema in 3D. Um, so it was a real learning curve. And did that change the writing in any way, Stephen? Because you had access to the possibility of this. Uh, you would have to tell me, uh, <laughs> tell me something about the writing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, work it out for yourself when you see it. Right, okay. It's yeah. hard. It's very yeah. hard. I tell you. But uh, what about those actors? Because presumably the camera behaves in a slightly different way. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was, well, it's heavier. That poor cameraman, Joe, the rig is enormous. Yeah, it's huge. So it, doesn't quite allow for the same fluidity. But it's not often it's in hand, uh, handheld either mm. in 3D, so that was something kind of new, I believe, that, that we did to kind of give it the same momentum. Yeah, and, it, and it's sort of, it's a slower process slightly, but hopefully, you know, Doctor Who has the sort of bones and the, the fabric of a show that can really respond to, to, to that media, you know. But also things like, I remember on one of the first days, yeah. And things like that, then you realise, oh, that's actually going to come right out of the screen, so you can afford to react, and you, so kind of trying to lend itself to the 3D as well, and play with that a bit. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. And you want to say to me? No, I'm, I'm just an old ball for a point, really. <laughs> <laughs> but have you been, have you been making it in what we might want there? Look, is it as the, the old-fashioned or the conventional way? Does it subtly alter what you do? Do you have a sense of yourself when the 3D camera is looking at you? Where you are in the picture, whether you're kind of something <laughs> or right before? Yeah, I, I found yes. Because it, just because I like to move around the line, it doesn't, yeah. doesn't afford you that same freedom. Um, so you sort of have to be sort of more aware as a result of that. I, personally, I mean, listen, I, I haven't seen it in 3D, so I'm really excited to be to see it in 3D, but I don't think I'd want to make a whole series in 3D as an actor because I think Very slow to yeah, it slows film. it down. But the novelty was great, and getting to run off set and go behind your 3D goggles yeah, and that's that's the in the tires. See that's my cool. big chin come out. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you have it here. Well, you're going to be watching the, the, the new episode tomorrow night. Yes, I am. Last night, you, were, you stayed up and watched it. I did. I, I went on Grand Norway last night with uh, Mr. Tennant, and then I got back and I watched Adventure in Time and Space, which I loved. I thought it was really, really moving. And David, I thought, was just fantastic. I didn't know he was such a grump. Oh, <laughs> a brilliant grump. But, uh, but you know, but, uh, I was really moved by it as well. And, um, I thought it was great, Mr. Tennant. Loved it. But you also watched uh, The Child. Oh, yeah. Well, after that, I've been before. I love Interesting life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I was just was on, I was like, wow, I've never seen this. I've got to make myself seem even more uninteresting, I mean, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I thought that was cool. What a great opening as well. Like, yeah, a, I think it's a really then, fun episode actually. I did, I did watch all four of them. 50 years.
no, io lo so. Ma che cazzo è che adesso è il caldo? 50 years on, when you watch that, uh, that first episode, Steve, what does it stir in you? I think it's one of the very, very best episodes of Doctor Who ever made. I really do. Uh, if, you, if you add to that the fact that all the ideas come from there, that's the one with the title sequence, the music, the name of the TARDIS, the, the police box that's big on the inside, the Doctor, the man from the future, just in the the past, all that stuff is all happening for the first time in one show. In terms of brand new ideas, uh, that's a roller coaster for 25 minutes. And you compare it to uh, all, all the proper television at the time. But then it's just people sitting in rooms having a gentle disagreement. It's like everything else is boring. And people have a tendency, uh, uh, wrongly, to slide off all the doctor with poor special effects and so on. But they let off Z cars. Z cars, and this is a fact, could not do a convincing car. Right? <laughs> and how did they get to work that one? They get to work in a car. Go to get some car park and shoot that. The doctor who was doing really quite possible spaceships. And sometimes not so possible spaceships. <laughs> Failing to do a spaceship is acceptable when you didn't arrive to work in one. <laughs> okay. In your opinion, take some questions uh, from the audience, and as with the regeneration show, uh, we'll go to ask those of you who want to ask a question to make yourself known to the stewards in the blue t-shirts. They, those trained BBC staff, will, uh, will select you and uh, the, the lucky few who we have time to, uh, um, to hear a question from will be brought up to the line to, to, uh, to ask it to the panel here. Now, although 